I do want to ask kind of with what you're saying with Aeon just recently, like, you know, oftentimes for like shape design, they're like, oh, pick like a shape and like make that your overarching shape for a character. Yeah. But a lot of characters that I find, find in like other artists, they don't necessarily do that. Like, sure, you can like be like this character and if you like squint is kind of triangular. But then like when you go in, it's not like they only use triangles right. or only use curves or only use squares or only use. Yeah, I mean. And like, then the same. Yeah. There's like the gestalt, which is the overall read that involves like the big shape, the silhouette, the first read. But as you mm -hmm. subdivide and go into it, kind of, kind of like having the square outside, circle inside, it's totally fine. You don't have to make everything inside mm -hmm. the character an egg. You know, the leaf on top of his head sort of, if you circled the whole thing, yeah, you can see an egg in there. But as you get down to like this, I don't know, badge or whatever that is, those are like pointy curvilinear triangles. So yeah, mix and match, whatever whatever suits the character. It's fine to start with one thing and then let it have its accents, you know? Um, should, I, should I run, you know, is it fine to run with a design that's not necessarily so like golden ratio, all that stuff, course. even though this one kind of doesn't like that? Uh, there are some things that I can help with, and it's that um, similar to the 70 2010. And it's that, like, okay, if we look at this character, we rarely come across any places that have equal parts. So the, the belt line is here, and at like the legs are down here. And you already kind of did this. Uh, and then this is way taller than the legs, right? So there's a certain ratio that's established. You, you know, even here, you've, you've laid that out really nicely uh so as we look at this uh th the question is i see like do we want to we, we want to find shapes that are canceling each other out and instead let the shapes mm -hmm. glorify one another so for example this is the same size as that i would instead yeah. make sure one of them dominates over the other and like mm -hmm. What I would do personally is probably make the onion shape up top way bigger and let the face kind of squish in a little bit here as kind of like mm -hmm. result. But that that's just me. Whatever you do might be different. Mm -hmm. Just one thing I often tell my students is avoid halves if you can. So, for example, this whole area yeah. is in half. Even vertically, it's like um, I don't see anything that's doing that. Um, yeah, it, well... Maybe not halves, but equal parts. So if we look at the width of this mm -hmm. and the width of that, that's fine. You could do that. What I would do is probably push these to be a little bit bigger so that it's no longer competing with the width of the neck. And, and so mm -hmm. it really just frames the neck and the face instead of uh, be too close to it. Having said that, what you already have is good to go. I mean, if, if you were to submit that with, for your children's book, it's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. The things I'm talking about are very subtle nitpicky things that could push a bit more of the design ideology or ph philosophy, if you will. If we have a perfect circle, we'll pretend it's perfect, as equal sides vertically, mm -hmm. equal sides this way. You know, as, a, as an artist, as a manipulator of images and shapes, you can push that to be wider, to be taller and skinnier, you could push only one side, or let's say you could push only one side. But the whole idea is you're you're pushing the sizes of, of shapes, which will end up influencing and changing the flow and the rhythm of everything else. So having said that, what basically every single shape here can be you can do that with. So if we, like I said, push that hair way out there, that's way way more than what you have and then pretty much give give that a shot with every single line you have there now you don't it doesn't mean you have to if you push that it doesn't mean you have to push everything else to that extent it might just be that that's the only thing you push um and in this case like instead of a straight line going down like this what would happen if you take that shape it's like a now now we have like a pair and then use that as the guide for what could happen down here. Maybe like the, the dress billows out in this way or whatever she's wearing, right? And that's, you know, pushing and, and finding ways to get, uh, you know, streamlined lines going into each other like that. 
Uh, and then like for the arms, like right now they're pretty straight, but here we've pushed that curvilinearity. What if for the, the bicep, it goes like this, but it dips in for the elbow area and dips way out uh, for the for the forearm, right? So that's what you, you, you could do to push and pull. You know, that's going too far. What, what would it be like if we pulled back? You know, it's like, um, you know, we, we just take this stuff and just make it basic and not really forced and like kind of make things a little bit safer and making the arms a bit more normal proportion, right? So that's the range you kind of think about. In our brain, we might have an impression of an idea, of a design, of a specific texture, whatever. These rarely end up on paper exactly the way you imagine them. Um, the impression of them is the start, because like that's what's going to inform the iteration, the ideation, the research, the reference. What Where you find the design is starting with it and then iterating until either you find something that you like or something that actually matches what you had in mind. Um, but iteration by pushing and pulling these and trying a different shape in there, putting a diamond in the middle of it, who knows? Uh, that's, that's the concept art process.